The Kong Show. Japan Today and Inside Digital Magazine present movie reviews for films opening this weekend. If you're in Japan thinking about a movie this coming weekend, or if you're in another country thinking about renting a movie, you'll want to listen to this as we have some very critical reviews by Metropolis film critic Don Morton. All right, where are we catching you this week, Don? I'm in Santa Cruz, California, where it was 79 degrees Fahrenheit the other day. I was biking around. That's 27 Celsius in the middle of January. And when will you be coming back to our nippy cold weather here in Japan? I'll be back in the beginning of February. All right. What movies are you reviewing this week? Okay, we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is barely a movie. The Face of Love, Mordecai, 20,000 Days on Earth, and begin again. All right, let's begin with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You got to give it to Michael Bay for knowing his audience. Yeah, but this pointless 100-minute big screen 3D toy commercial and or video game will disappoint even the mouth breathing preteens it's aimed at. It's Ooh. a waste of pixels. Ooh. It lacks any real sense of fun. Can you say anything good about this movie? It didn't give me a headache, that's, but that's only because I had one going in just thinking about it. How do you prepare yourself to go to this movie? You try to be unconscious. <laughs> Date movie? No, unless you're dating someone who's 11. <laughs> Next movie is called The Face of Love. Annette Benning. She loses her beloved husband, played by Ed Harris, five years earlier. Then she spots a guy who's his dead ringer, also played, of course, by Ed Harris. She stalks him. She meets him. She causes him to fall in love with her. And she keeps this uncanny resemblance secret from her family and friends, and even from the new guy. What could go wrong? What's this movie trying to do? I really don't know. Separated at birth, a weird fantasy, portrait of a mad woman. It's not really ever made clear. But this is a case in which two great actors can take a maudlin, disjointed story like this and make it work. It's a pleasure to watch. Wait a minute. Don't I see Robin Williams' face right there? He has a small part in it, but not a major one. Speaking of faces, the face of Johnny Depp showed up at Haneda Airport recently. Why was he in town? Well, he's in town to promote Mordecai, our next movie. Now, Johnny Depp is one of our most beloved actors. He's almost everybody's favorite actor. And it's hard for him to do a bad movie. But he's having a slump of late. What do you mean by that? Look at his last couple of movies. Lone Ranger, A Turkey, Transcendence, A Bomb. And this is an inane new vanity project. Yeah, he produces it as well. It's not going to help much. He plays a preening, mustachioed, not-so-honest British art dealer. He's running around the world trying to recover a missing Goya. He disappears into the title character, as usual, with a wide array of brick ticks and mannerisms. Only this time the character isn't all that funny. Nor is the movie. Was anything funny? Yeah, it's not terrible. I laughed six times, I think, but I expected to laugh a lot more. How can a film be so frenetic and at the same time so obstinately dull? Gwyneth Paltrow's in it and Ewan McGregor. This is a misfire and a disappointment. Speaking of Johnny Depp, he showed up here in Japan. Mm-hmm. At Haneda Airport, however, he did not show up for his press conference. And we have a report about that right now from Insight reporter Kevin McHugh. Kevin, what was up with that? So I went to the press conference uh, yesterday at the beautiful Peninsula Hotel. And there are so many journalists there that they've got the photographers and the writers in separate rooms. There's easily 150 photographers, maybe 200 people in, in the writer's room. And they're going to move Johnny from one room to another so everyone has a chance. And, you know, everyone's sitting there. The start time has passed. Ten minutes later, they come out saying, uh, Johnny's not feeling well. Uh, we're going to start about 30 or 40 minutes late. And I was remembering the story from the 90s when he went to the Cannes Film Festival with his then-girlfriend, Kate Moss. And he had a whole day of interviews scheduled, and he just canceled the whole thing. And then they found out that his hotel room was completely trashed. And I was thinking, well, you know, the guy's 51 now. Maybe he settled down. Maybe he really is sick, or maybe there's... So he was a no-show for his own press conference. Yeah, exactly. So after the, you know, the promised 30-minute delay had passed, they came out and said, well, Mr. Depp is not feeling well. He's got to walk the red carpet tonight, so he's, he's resting at the moment, and the conference is off. And so how did the press corps react to that? You know, most people didn't say anything. A few people were obviously mad, and they said, I can't go back to my newspaper 
without a story. But, you know, we had no choice. The guy, the guy didn't show up. I remarked to someone walking out of the room, you know, have you ever called in sick for work? We all have. So I think this was just his sick day. And did anybody check his room to see if he trashed it again this time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. I think, uh, I think the guy's probably mellowed out a bit in the last few years. All right, Kevin McHugh, I'm sure we'll be able to read your entire report inside the digital pages of Insight Digital Magazine, right? Yes, and uh, Colin, thank you very much for having me. And, uh, you know, the film Mordecai, it's not doing so well at the box office in the U.S. Maybe that's why Johnny didn't show up, but uh, I, for one, am going to go check it out. All right, Kevin McHugh, thank you very much. Don, back to you. Thanks, Kevin. That was good. If I were Johnny Jeff, I probably wouldn't have showed up for the press conference either. Our next movie is called 20,000 Days on Earth. It's a documentary, a personal documentary uh, by Nick Cave, a pioneering alt-rock songwriter, musician, and poet. He couldn't really do a conventional film on his life so far, so he presents it in a guise of a fictitious day-in-the-life film. We follow Nick around to rehearsals and visits with band members and friends, and he chats with them. What's notable about this is that instead of an interviewer interviewing Nick, it's a staged psychotherapy session that when you oh. think about it, this is the perfect way to discuss how he thinks and what his influences were. The, the production values are impressive. They impart a gothic grit, intensity, and innovation that matches the musician's work. And there's lots of music. It was well done. Good soundtrack in this movie? Good soundtrack. All right. Well, let's begin again. Remember the movie Once? It was a charming little film in 2006 by John Carney about a pair of Dublin street musicians finding their groove. It won an Oscar for Best Song. Now Carney's made another film, and on a similar theme, only now he has a bigger budget, he has name actors, and it's set in New York City. Who are the name actors? Kiara Knightley and Mark Ruffalo. Kiara plays a freshly dumped songwriter coerced by a friend into one personal acoustic song in a noisy New York club. She's pretty much ignored. The only one listening is a drunken, washed-up music producer, played by Ruffalo, and a possible career best. I think he was very good in this movie. Mm. Her performance is replayed through his eyes as his music man's imagination rearranges the song and adds sidemen that only he can hear. It's a magical and memorable scene. The two begin a sort of professional courtship that has the potential to bring both their lives back on track. This is unforced, it's unpretentious, the music's good, and the characters are appealing, and the story's just offbeat enough to keep you interested. Now, of all the movies you just told us about, which one would you suggest as the best date movie? The best date movie is 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 Begin Again. The big brouhaha in the USA these days is about this movie called American Sniper. Of course, it will be coming to Japan soon. Did you see it yet? I did see it. I saw it last week. I was enthralled throughout. I have a few political problems with the amorality of killing people in war, but that's neither here nor there. Hold on. He said he did that to save American lives. Well, I don't want to get political here, but they, we wouldn't have been in Iraq if uh, George Bush hadn't taken us there. So who's, who's, uh, who's not saving American lives? Would you suggest this movie? I would. It's, a, it's cinematically, it's Clint Eastwood directed it. It's quite enthralling and very interesting to see. Buddy movie? Yeah. The Oscars are coming right up. Do you have any picks or predictions? Well, I'm going to go with Boyhood as a sweep here. It's going to get Best Picture, mm. Best Director. So you're going with Boyhood for Best Picture. All right, let me mark that down. And Best Actor. Best Actor is a toss-up between two Brits, a Benedict Cumberbatch for The Imitation Game, and Eddie Redmayne as in The Theory of Everything. And I'm going to go with Eddie Redmayne. Best Actress, Felicity Jones is very good in The Theory of Everything, but I'm going to go work with Rosamund Pike in Gone Girl. All right, thank you for your Oscar picks. Don Morton appears here in the Kong Show, courtesy of Metropolis, where you can read all of his reviews. Don will talk again next week. Thank you, Kong. See you next week back in Japan. 